It's choice, not chance, that changes your life. A simple phrase, but one that we too often ignore. My mission in life is to get everyone who feels disenfranchised, marginalized, forgotten, anything, to embrace their life and to reclaim their life with purpose, passion, and unapologetic authenticity. Here is my story. I was born into an abusive home in Oakland, California in 1964. Yes, 1964, I'll do the math for you, I am 58 years old. 19, see why I get it out of the way? <laughs> 1964 is not a great time to grow up in Oakland as a little black girl. You see, you're either invisible or you were prey. I was both. My life changed when I was 10 years old. By then, my mother had left my abusive father and we rented a house from an Oakland Raider, Ben Davidson. My mother was a huge football fan, so this was huge, and Ben gave us tickets to a home game. The seats, 50-yard line at the railing. It was sweet. I didn't really care. It was lost on me. I wasn't a big football fan. I was just a fan of being with my mom. Until, off in the distance, I saw the most incredible sight I'd ever seen. I saw a group of women coming toward me, marching toward the sideline, and they were shiny and sparkly, and they were so glamorous. I'd never seen anything like it in my entire life. It was the Oakland Raiderettes. I was mesmerized. I never took my eyes off of them for the entire game. It made me so happy to see them and a little sad because I knew there was a big difference between them and me. They were special. I was not. They were seen. I was invisible. But as I watched them throughout the game, I thought, what if I was meant to be special too? What if I was going to be just like them one day? Maybe I was going to be somebody. And right then, I vowed that I would be. And you know, that feeling that you get when the light goes on and you don't know how or when or why, but you just know you're going to do something great? That's what it was like for me. The spark went off. I had my moment two years later in junior high school. Can I hand this to you for a moment? In junior high school, I see a flyer for cheerleader tryouts. And I'm thinking, yes, this is my moment. I am about to have my much bigger life. I threw myself into tryouts. I knew my dance moves. I had my high Vs, my go teams, my high kicks. I nailed it. And when tryouts were over, thank you, they announced me on the team as the fourth alternate. Do you know how bad you have to be <laughs> to be the fourth alternate in middle school? <laughs> I mean, my dreams just disappeared. I wasn't going to be somebody. But then, a month later, the sponsor, they didn't call them coaches then, the sponsor decided to put me on the team after all. I didn't understand, so I asked her why. And this is what she said. Charlene, you're very talented, but you're black, and I thought you'd be a troublemaker. But now that I see you're a nice little girl, I want you on the team. In hindsight, I don't know what was more shocking, that she thought it was okay to say that to a 12-year-old or that I, as that 12-year-old, understood and accepted her point. Black people were bad. It was then that I began to realize that people would see my color and define me before I could ever define myself. That people would see my color before they would ever see me. 
You know, I think there are pivotal moments in everyone's life, and it's what you do in those moments that determines what kind of person you will be and what kind of life you will have. And I was in that moment. And I had seen enough in my young life and been through enough that I knew I had to make a choice. I could go left, and I could be angry and carry that anger with me for the rest of my life, as I have seen so many people do, many in my family. Or I could go right, and I could be better than she or anyone else ever thought I could be. I chose to go right. You see, just because someone tells you that you're less than does not mean that you have to believe it, own it, and become it. You can choose something different. It is choice, not chance, that changes your life. It is choice, not chance, that changes your life. As I got older, I learned how to navigate my life while experiencing racism, sexism, misjudgment, being marginalized, and flat out ignored. And I also learned some really important things, too. I learned mental toughness. I learned how to ignore the bias, the unfair definitions. I learned how to be a trailblazer and not a token, a victor and not a victim. Someone who thrives rather than someone who just merely survives. And most importantly, I learned how to be seen. I went on to cheer in high school, college, and ultimately in the NFL. Don't mind the big hair, it was the 90s. <laughs> But you know, you can't cheer forever. As I continued on my quest for this big life, I entered a bold new world, corporate America. No one looked like me. And before I knew it, I had faded into the background, and I was invisible again. And I'm ashamed to say that for the next 30 years, I ignored my own life mantra of choice, not chance, and I let the allure of success take hold, and I let chance take hold, and I became who the people around me told me I needed to be in order to be successful. I became her. I became the perfect black female executive. I learned my place. I learned how to speak up but not too passionately, or you'll be the angry black woman. Stand out, but not too much. I learned to swallow my pride when people told me with surprise that I was so articulate, as though that was a compliment. I learned to stay silent as people lauded my company for giving me such a big job, you know, without even acknowledging my competence. And I learned to leave my authentic self at home and code switch just enough to make sure that I wasn't a pet or a threat. And it worked. At 35, I was vice president at a $3 billion company. At 45, I was an executive at a $40 billion firm. I was kicking butt and taking names. I was killing it. But in actuality, it was killing me. You see, I was more stressed out than I'd ever been. And at first, I thought the stress, I reveled in it because I thought it signaled responsibility. Flying all over the world meant that I had important things to say and do. And that paycheck meant that I could have almost anything I wanted. Almost. When your head and your heart are not aligned, your body tells you. And if you, don't if you don't listen, it screams even louder. And at the height of my career, at 53 years old, when I thought I had indisputably arrived, I was diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer. I didn't have time for cancer. I was busy. I was an only, the only black female executive in this huge organization. And you see, when you're an only, you carry your entire race. You have to be hyper-vigilant and always on point because there's always people waiting for you to fail, and your failure becomes everyone else's failure. 
So no, I didn't have time for cancer. But six months earlier, I had been diagnosed with a different cancer, and I practically ignored it. I had major surgery and went back to work a week later and told almost no one. But this cancer? This cancer was different. There would be no going back. My seven-month treatment plan that my doctors laid out turned into nine surgeries in three years and a five-year battle for my life. I almost died. But that wasn't the worst part to me. The worst part was that this carefully curated facade of a perfect black female executive was crumbling. I was crumbling. I was so lost. And I had to be honest with myself that for the last 30 years, I hadn't been living my life, my truth. I'd been living a persona. And I'll be really frank with you. I wanted to die. I just didn't want to die from cancer. You know, one of my favorite quotes is from Maya Angelou. And she says, when you know better, you do better. It was time for me to do better. It was time for me to make a choice, to choose me, to come back to myself, to come back to that 12-year-old who refused to be defined all those years ago. And I did. In 2020, I walked away from a life that I had spent 30 years building. I walked away from the pretense of being happy. Play acting. I just let go. I came out to the world as an imperfect black female. And it was the best thing I ever did, because I stepped into my divine purpose. To step into your divine purpose, you have to let go and just freely fall into whoever it is that you are supposed to be. It's the only way to live a fulfilled and complete life. Some of you may be at a crossroad. You may have something that's working or not working quite as well, and maybe it's time for a new way of being, a new way of showing up. Take control while you still have time. Choose before chance takes over. So how do you walk away from a life that you've spent you know, your entire world thinking that you wanted? You know, how do you know that you're living by choice and not chance? How do you cultivate the courage There are just two ways. And when, I'll tell you those in a minute, but when you do it, amazing, an amazing thing happens on the other side. You get your spark back. You walk back into who you really are. So how do you do it? Number one, first and foremost, know and believe that you are enough. You are everything that you need to be right now. Ignore the voices that say something different, even if they're c coming from within. If you start and believe that you are enough, you can do great things. And number two, exercise the power of seven seconds of courage. I believe with seven seconds of courage, you can transform your life. Just seven seconds. There are a lot of things you can do in seven seconds. You can put mascara on both eyes without looking. You really can. <laughs> you can swipe left or right and find your soulmate or not. You can make or assess a first impression in seven seconds. But with seven seconds of courage, you can transform your life. And I'm living proof. Live your best life. Take six seconds and just have the courage to make the decision. You know, neuroscientists and experts have done lots of research on what it takes to make big choices, but it really just comes down to this. The first six seconds are all emotion. It's when we're in the fight or flight zone, we've all felt it, the fear. But that seventh second is when the magic happens, because that's when the other part of our brain takes over, and we can take action. So live your life and take your six seconds and let the fear just fall away. It is the only way to break free from whatever 
or whoever is holding you back and break through to the life you truly want. It is choice, not chance, that changes your life. Thank you.